I want to thank uh, NAP New York for organizing this wonderful celebration of the Asian American community. In particular, I'd like to thank George Tung, Chairman of the Board and Founder, Judy Lau, President, and Julia Chen, uh, VP of Programming. I want to congratulate the other honorees. And of course, thanks to our, uh, to our host, Richard Louie. Um, I'm Asian American, so I don't twerk. <laughs> Maybe some of the other honorees will. Um, it, it is great to get an award, uh, which in the title says that you're very influential. It's, it's a very nice honor. It's odd to me, because I'm not even the most influential member of my own family. Uh, we took a vote one time in my family, and I came in seventh, <laughs> which is which is odd because there are only five people in my household. But you know, it's nice to get an award that my family is not voting on. Uh, it's important, I think, no matter what happens in life, to have uh, people who keep you humble and and make sure that you understand what humility is. And we've done a lot of great cases in my office. And the nice thing is that I come home, and my daughter, who is 12 is not impressed with anything I do at all. <laughs> Every once in a while, someone will say that they have talked uh, to their children about how you can be from any part of the world and come to America and you can achieve something, and they will say that they give the example of me or somebody else who was you know, in, in public office and has done some things. And it occurred to me, you know what, my kids don't think that I'm impressive at all, and one day I decided, you know, if other people are trying to pass off you know, me and my life and, and some of the things I do as inspiration, then my own children should read about me. So I, uh, a couple of years ago, there was an article in the New York Times that was talking about one of the uh, uh, successful prosecutions we brought in an insider trading case. And I told my daughter, you know, you should read, she was about 11 at the time, and I said, why don't you read this story about Daddy? And she said, okay. And she was very upset that I was making her read something about me. And she's reading the article, and I'm thinking she's going to be proud of her father. And at the end of the article, it quotes me as saying something, you know, very, you know, finger pointy uh, about how, uh, you know, I wish we could say we we're almost uh, done and we cleaned up hedge funds or something like that, but we're far from finished. And my daughter looks up, and I'm thinking she's going to be proud of her dad, and she's going to say it's a great thing. And she looks at me and she says, Daddy, why are you such a drama queen? <laughs> That's why I, I live for awards like this, because I don't get them at home. Um, so public service, I think, is something that uh, is important in America. Uh, a lot of people talk about public service being a sacrifice. In my mind, public service is never ultimately a sacrifice, as people sometimes suggest. I think it is a privilege, and it is an honor. And more than anything else, Public service is an opportunity to attempt to pay down, in some small way, the deep debt that all of us owe to our community and our country, which can never be fully repaid. Muhammad Ali once put it this way. He said, quote, service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth. Now, if that's true, there are a lot of people, not people in this room, who owe a lot of back rent. And we should talk to them at some point. But I have always felt, perhaps because I am an immigrant, I wasn't born in this country, I'm an immigrant to this country, a special obligation to repay that debt. Every once in a while I'm asked, and maybe many of you have been asked, um, what is the relevance of your being from another part of the world? What's the relevance of being Asian American? In my case, Indian American, more specifically. To me, the most important relevance of being an Indian immigrant, in terms of how I think about my work, and my career and my priorities is this. It drives a deep feeling of obligation to give back to the country that gave me and my family so very much. I know this can sometimes sound corny, but I agree with the adage that to whom much is given, much is expected. In fact, I sometimes feel that I will not have enough breaths in my body to give back what I feel I owe my adopted country. I believe that this is the greatest nation on earth for many reasons. One of those reasons is seldom appreciated, and it has to do with the rule of law, which is part of what my business is about. In this country, where more languages and cultures and cuisines exist than anywhere else, 
The law binds us together in ways that we too seldom appreciate. And in a way, and over time, the law has become part, I think, of the essential social and cultural glue of America. And that is something worth remembering and celebrating. Because here's the thing. Whatever name you give your God, whatever book you deem scripture, whatever rituals of religious faith you observe, whether you are orthodox or reformed, whether you are devout or lapsed, whether you pray or not, if you are an American, Asian American or otherwise, you are bound to every one of your fellows in the greatest country that has ever existed by a pious faith in enduring principles of liberty and equality and the rule of law. That is the founding formula for our country, for our democracy, for our prosperity. That is the reason that people of all faiths and all colors and all cultures come here. That is the reason that those same people invest here and build here and stay here. That's the reason my own family came. And it is the reason that I can stand before you today, the son of a father who came from virtually nothing, who was born 74 years ago in a colony, still ruled in the name of the King of England, who later absconded to the US with barely pennies in his pocket, with a young wife and an infant son with an unpronounceable name, who less than 40 years later somehow became the chief federal law enforcement officer in the financial capital of the world. Part of the reason that I think this can even be is that the United States has built a system of laws, even if flawed and frequently in need of repair, that enshrines the right to equal opportunity and embodies the sacred American idea that every child, even a poor or orphaned or immigrant child, can rise higher than that child's parents could ever have imagined. And that has been true for so many people in this room, and I have lived that dream also. And so I suppose that this is the one relevant aspect of having a certain ethnic background. A first-time achievement in a community is something like a mini moon landing. The first Asian American U.S. attorney, or the first Asian American judge, or the first Asian American circuit court judge, or the first Asian American governor. It expands horizons. It signals something to young people who may not yet know that their dreams can become reality too. Even though they may have a funny name, or an exotic heritage, or a misunderstood religion. But as I said, the, the greatest relevance to me of my background is a deep desire to serve and give back, and I recommend it every chance I get. The virtue of serving the public cannot be overstated. Not only does the world benefit, but those who engage in it benefit also. I don't know anyone who has spent time in public service who hasn't loved it, who hasn't learned from it, and who hasn't advanced because of it. Serving the public is one of the greatest propositions in the history of propositions. Now, I worry that sometimes people don't think to try because they wonder what difference can they make just by themselves. They perhaps worry that their contribution might be too small to be worth the effort and to be worth the sacrifice. To those people, I say it is worth remembering the words of Edmund Burke, who once observed, quote, Nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. People in public service and who are dedicated to public service, I think, understand that principle and don't make that mistake, even though they are often, especially lately, denigrated and dismissed. It has become popular in some places in America to denigrate public service, and in particular, government service. We just had to endure a 17-day government shutdown where people are saying that those who work in government don't deserve to be paid like everyone else. And I will tell you that it makes me actually angry, very angry, when people walk around pointing fingers at certain parts of the government, of which I am a member, and saying that government is the problem. Now, the government is not perfect. 
But I take personal offense sometimes when people seem to be talking about those who work in my office, people like those who work in my office, and who work as police officers, and who work as FBI agents, and who work as Secret Service agents, who every day receive lower pay than they might otherwise receive, but who do so much to keep our country safer, our community safer, and make life better for so many people. In my view, people like that should be getting raises, not being furloughed. And at a time when there is so much cynicism, when there is so much leaked talk about the future, at a time when so many people seem concerned only about themselves, when so many people seem to care excessively only about the buck and the bottom line, selfless public servants give people hope and faith. Hope that idealism is not dead, and faith that idealism has a purpose, and most importantly, that purposeful idealism can have real impact. Impact on the people whose rights are vindicated, whose communities are protected, whose life savings are returned, whose pleas are answered, and whose causes are championed. And so it is the great honor of my life to work with people who think like that and who do things like that. And when you honor me with this uh, little-deserved award, you're really honoring them. And so, you know, being Asian American and being in public service and having the job I have, uh, I, from time to time, I think about, as you might, I think about where my parents came from. And I think about how far they came. And I think about how very much they overcame. And I think about the hopes and dreams they harbored for their young sons in a new and strange country that they might amount to something in America. And I think if there is still something called the American dream, then I have dreamt it, I have lived it, and I hope to never awaken from it. And from where I stand uh, up here in this great hall, looking at all of you, I think you are all living it too. I hope you all find the time to serve in whatever small way you can. Thank you for this award, and thank you for being here this evening.